This is Mike Goldberg, the voice of Bellator MMA. Great to be podside once again. Set to enter the podcast right now. Our tale of the tape, the current undefeated champion of the world, Captain Hooter, defending his title once again. And I can tell you, no champion has ever defended his podcast this many times. Well, since podcast began. Can he do it again? Let's find out. Here we go! It's Captain Hooter. Hello. Dzień dobry. Bon dia. Dobre utra. Dobre utra. It is our third Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We look up acting. Buenos dias. Hello. Everybody online looking good. Morning. Sawadee so krab. Good night. Dobroho ranku. Bon dia. Como va? Habari a tu buhi. Good morning world. What's happening, everybody? Hooter here. I'm in a beautiful villa here overlooking the streets of Las Vegas, Nevada. And this is the perfect spot to be for today's show. I am thrilled to have the founder and co-CEO of Planet 13, Larry Scheffler, with me today. Dude, I got to meet him a couple of years ago, and he told me the whole plan of what was going to happen in Las Vegas, and that's exactly what's happened. Unbelievable. Dude was right on the numbers. And this is a great opportunity to catch up and find out what's happened. So check out this interview and we'll be right back in a few minutes. Hola, hola, everyone. Captain Hooter here coming to you once again, very high and very alive and coming to you from a slightly different angle this week because we are very excited to have um, the chairman and co-CEO of Planet 13, Larry Scheffler with us. How, how are you, sir? Very good. How are you? I'm doing incredible. And you jumped right into my head this last week when I heard about cannabis lounges going to be open up in Las Vegas. And I, I went right back in my head and you're walking me around and we're looking at this big open space in the back and you're telling me all about the cannabis lounge and the and the education room. And oh my God, this must have been such great news for you this week. Yeah, it has been a long, long time coming. And actually passed the law, of course, last year. They were supposed to have the state and the county are supposed to have the rules done by January. And here we are in July. And hopefully we'll be able to open in August. With all of that going on, our, our model changed a little bit. We're now going to convert our Trace Mexican restaurant into a full uh, edible restaurant. Oh, yes. So now you can come in and get any food will come uninfused, the normal food, great stuff. And then we will give you, say, if you're having a steak, we'll give you a pat of butter, a garlic butter with THC in it. And you put the THC on yourself. You, you apply your additive. If you have a, a chocolate cake, the ganache will have THC in it. The salad will have, say, the salad dressing. So uh, you, you, you infuse your own. Everybody can order all the food the same and infuse what you want to and uh, have a great time doing it. It'll be a real great experience. And I think I know it'll be the first one in Las Vegas and in, in many places in the United States. You know, it's one of the things that uh, when I first met you, um, uh, to be honest with you, I, I, I didn't quite understand what was going on. Now, remember, this was two years ago. And right. when, when I kept asking you about, you know, things that had to do with cannabis, you were relatively uneducated, uh, would be the proper term, uh, yeah. about the flower. But your passion and your creativity and... I, my partner and I, neither one of us ever tried our own product, oddly enough. The last time I spoke to was 1970 in the Air Force, loading bombs on airplanes like an idiot, right? <laughs> and while we were loading, we were smoking. And, uh, but the third leg of our stool and the partner we brought on with our grow is our head guy for everything that you got to know about cannabis with international awards in first, second, third place uh, 
for five years out of Amsterdam. So he's just, just a phenomenal young man, so passionate. And he's, he's like a savant in what he does with cultivation and knowing cannabis. Well, and you're talking about Chris, of course, who is a, Chris who is very, yeah, he's very well known, uh, uh, one of the, the true master growers. Uh, last time when I was there, I had one of his cultivars, which was called Irene, which I believe oh, yeah. was the sister of Chloe. Yeah, the evil yeah. sister of Chloe. <laughs> okay, exactly. Can you tell the story about how you connected with him in the very beginning? Yeah, absolutely. Bob and I, of course, we're good at entrepreneurs and I've had businesses for 45 years. And so neither one of us knew anything about cultivation. And we said, we're smart enough to know what we didn't know. So we said, we got to have to find a good grower. So we interviewed, you know, six or seven guys and they'd be coming in with their kind of head down and droopy eyes and going, yeah, hey man, I can grow you some good stuff, man. I'm thinking, ooh, you're so stoned, you can't even look me in the eye, you know. If we can't do any better than this, maybe we need to think about redoing this, uh, getting into cannabis. And um, so then uh, uh, my son-in-law, who is a general manager for a paving crew here in town, um, he, he said, I got a guy that uh, works in paving with me, wants to know if we can grow for you. <laughs> I'm thinking, Bob, no offense, but it's a tough job over there, I know. And most of your guys are felons or ex-cons, right? They're tatted <laughs> up to their eyeballs. And they literally hit each over the head with a shovel once a week in a fight. I go, I, I don't think it'll work. Oh, okay. A week later, he says, he still texting me. You want to meet with him? I'm thinking, yeah, I, I, I'll get back to you. Maybe forget about asking me. Two weeks later, he's texting me, emailing me. Could you just meet with him to get him off my back? And I said, okay, have him come up to the house. And so he comes up to the house and here's a young man, six foot two, clean cut, short hair, a suit on with a briefcase. I go, who the hell are you? He said, I'm, I'm Chris, uh, Bob's friend. You're telling me you work on a paving crew with my son-in-law. No, I work in the laboratory. We sell them in the asphalt. Right. I do the analysis. I, first, you think you could have told me that first, right? <laughs> and we didn't even know what to, he didn't even know what to ask me. Of course, he says, hey, do you want to see my wares? Your wares? I'm going, what are you talking about? But we didn't want to act too stupid. So we go, yeah, show me your wares, kid. He brings out this Chloe that he's been working on for 10 years breeding opens up the jar and like just fill the house with smell. I go, what the hell is that? And he was telling me and he said, uh, and I've been asked to join the, uh, I enter the international uh, contest in Amsterdam World Cup, invitation only, and I'm gonna take first place. I had no idea what he was talking about. And so, uh, and again, still no questions know what to ask him because we knew nothing. So all I could say is, tell us what you know about growing kid. After two hours, I looked at my partner and said, I think we found our guy. Yeah. And we, and we then gave him 6% of the company. He was that valuable to us. And he's got an absolute godsend in a third leg of our stool. Wow. And what a great call. And I mean, you, from there, uh, you expanded. I mean, you have the largest crib in the world. And yeah. you know, it's almost overwhelming. And, and you know, I was talking to a group of people online and we were talking about Planet 13 Las Vegas. And the, the one young lady, she said the enormity of it was overwhelming. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, you know, I understand that. Uh, I, at the same time, you know, just looking at it with uneducated eyes is one thing. When I did that tour walking around with you and you started saying that's going to be over here and this is going to be there and over here. Now, one of the things that I was excited about, and I don't know if this is still on the table or not, uh, mm -hmm. but you were talking about education facility or some sort of a, a teaching area. Is that still in the it, work? Well, we have, we have a teaching area now with two full-time instructors. We, we have classes every day for our, 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 our employees, for all the bud tenders. Mm -hmm. And even we buy from 50 different people that grow vendors and so we even demand that they come in and talk about their product to our bud tenders also so it it never stops but then we're also uh, putting in a, a two-story cannabis museum interactive mm. to talk about cannabis and the history of cannabis and what it really is and the fallacies and the the, the bad press that we get all the time as we all know um from way back when nixon started the whole the whole shebang <laughs> with the monkey uh, yeah. with the brains uh, you know blowing up <laughs> i have to tell you again my hands are almost sweaty just thinking about what you're going to do with the lounge 
Can you do you have any of the? Can you te tell, tease us a little bit with any of the? Well, we're we're, all, we're also we're not only going to have that, but next door we have our bar. We're going to move the bar, and that'll be the dab and smoking lounge. Besides, mm. so you'll have that next door. Then you have your restaurant besides, and then we're also going to be putting in an arcade next to that that you can smoke at the arcade for different gaming things you want to do too, which is a big hot item now that people love to do. So Virtual it'll be, a, yeah, th three of the suites will kind of be connected together, all to do with consumption on site uh, of cannabis, which we're very excited about. And then the, the area way in back that I, I talked to you about, which is about 50,000 square feet now, three stories up. We just went out to bid on that and that will be a, a full blown nightclub that rivals anything on the Las Vegas Strip. God, you're a one-stop shop. Okay, so where's the, what about the rooms? I need rooms. I need a hotel room in there somewhere. Yeah, well, we've been approached by that, but that's quite a competition to try to go up against all the 140,000 rooms already. So we oh. let that go by. <laughs> now, now, let me ask you, when the, when the lounge uh, law becomes uh, legal or whatever happens, uh, is this going to allow other nightclubs in Las Vegas to then start selling cannabis as well or is this no just something that it'll be so no it's i think it, it's about 25 of them you have to be attached to a dispensary mm -hmm. and you can't have cannabis still by state law uh, within the gaming corridor or at a hotel legally you know, we can't deliver at a hotel you're legally not supposed to smoke at a hotel and hence why they're trying to allow some type of consumption lounges so the tourists have some place to go legally right you know, it's funny because we, you, we, when you start talking about infused uh, uh, edibles, uh, I have several chefs who have been on the show and, you know, we've talked about safety and about, uh, you know, making sure that you have safe transportation. And again, one of the only places that you could do something like this and really feel good about it and confident about it is Las Vegas if you've already got your own transportation service. It's like you, you guys thought of everything. Yeah, we, we tried to. Ours works really best taking you back. Hotels frown on us being too much around their area with the cannabis uh, on picking up. So let's take Uber and Lyft and taxis over here. And then, of course, like you, you know, we have two buses that will take you back to any hotel that you want to go back to. Free of charge. Mm -hmm. So tell me <laughs> now, if you, from where I left you, and, and I, I still see the, the fire in your eyes here and your excitement about this. Uh, I was worried about how much, because I had been to a couple of the, the local uh, cannabis association meetings where it had all of the, uh, the legislators uh, discussing it. And I just was going, oh, this is yeah. going to be a lot of, uh, you know. So you've had a couple of years at this now, going up against it. A couple of years of what? Uh, of, of going up against or going up and working with uh, yes. all of these politicians. If right now you could wave a magic wand and say, here's what the rules should be. And let's just start, go from here and fix it and go forward. What would you make those rules? How would you say? Well, up? It, it, it depends on whether you're talking about locally or globally. Of course, the first thing it should be easy enough to do is the banking rules relaxing banking so we can use credit cards in regular banks and thank god we have a bank but even it being able to use credit cards for all the customers that come here that could be the first step of course federally letting it go back to the states like alcohol and not worrying about the feds uh, controlling the whole thing could be the next one uh and then you can go down as far as you want to what we're doing here we don't think there should be any more uh, people, different states keep talking about adding more licenses to their state. And what's going to happen is like they did, you know, Denver got uh, way too many licenses in there, Colorado yeah. and Washington and Oregon got the same thing too. And now people are folding and, and failing and so on. Uh, do, treat it like you're going to do alcohol or bars or liquor stores. It goes by per capita. So you don't flood the market also. And then everyone gets hurt. So those are just some of the things that are going on. Move a little faster on some of these issues. The big thing that they'll have to take a little bite of, I think we'll see, and I'll make a prediction. Right now, you can't, can't mix alcohol in, in cannabis. We don't know what's going to happen. Oh, my God, the sky will fall. Well, they can go across the street to the second largest strip club in the world, drink all they want, come over here, get cannabis, go back over there, and, and the world's not falling apart. So we'll have to take a little bite of an apple. We, I think, have shown that 
because we have such a big entertainment complex, we actually have a full bar in here across the hallway from our cannabis and the sky hasn't fallen. The world hasn't fallen apart. So uh, it would take a little bite of an apple, then a bigger bite, then that's okay, this is okay. And eventually cannabis and, and uh, alcohol will be blended together and uh, uh, it, it's gonna work out just fine. How's the, uh, how's the black market been there in, in Vegas? It's, it's very good in Vegas. Of course, it's still people come over from California and try to uh, do a tweet or a thing the day before, a few hours before, I should say, to hold a, a, a quick black market. But it's nothing like California. As you probably know, 75% of everything sold in California is black market. Mm -hmm. uh, here, it's, it's very small. We don't really hear a lot about it at all. We're very lucky. Do you still have, and I'm, I'm trying to remember, I'm pretty sure that the last time I was there, there was a, one of the, one of the dispensaries had a, what did they call it? A, 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 a farm, a farmer's market. And they were, they were selling flour and buds out of jars, uh, deli style. So not packaged, not in any kind of container, but still deli style. Is that still legal in Nevada now, or have they changed that? I, I, I don't even think it was legal then. Oh, okay. <laughs> they, they got away with it, and now I think it's pretty much, uh, they realize it's too much uh, against the law on the gray side, and they've stopped doing that also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. And, what, and then, of course, uh, we just had yesterday, we got a press release in the local TV and all the newspapers about the uh, do dueling robots that we put in behind glass at our production facility that actually have big source and get it into a sword fight and the loser pours a winner a beer from a bottle of uh, a bottle of beer and they salute each other and go back to work. And uh, <laughs> that's their newest attraction. We just got started about a month ago. Dude, you, I, I was so blown away. I remember the first time uh, walking through and I had a giant uh, a, a lighted flying drone ball come up right behind me and I turned around and there was five of them all dancing around in the air, entertaining. Uh, the, the second time I came in, somebody was flying a butterfly drone through yeah. the hallway. You guys have just, you know, you're, you're over the top with, with the amount of entertainment, which is, which is again, getting back to the lounge. Are, are you imagining a, a stage uh, where you could have some live entertainment in there and... Uh, I don't think we'll have room uh, for much live entertainment in there, but there will be live entertainment, all different kinds of things at the club. And you can go from the can, uh, from the dispensary to the to the consumption lounge to the dab lounge to the club for alcohol and back out. So it's all under one roof. Never leave the building. Never go outside. That's what I'm saying. You're going to have to be selling sleeping bags because I can <laughs> see just everybody all around the floor about two a.m. So okay, we're well, good night. Uh, They'll just breathe in the, 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 the smell. Now, you guys, uh, you guys, before also before I left, I got a chance to see your relatively new place down in Orange County. Uh, uh, just a baby. It's only, what, 40,000 square feet? <laughs> the building one? itself, yeah. The, the dispensary itself is only 13, which is about the size of our original one here when we built our superstore. Mm -hmm. Of course, so since we've, we've doubled it to 78 cash registers here now, because we had to prepare for our, our, our club and our consumption lounge for the added people, because nobody's gonna wanna wait an hour. So we had to think ahead, what do we do to be ready for when we open the club? So it's all gotta go in stages and you gotta, gotta be prepared. What's gonna be the maximum capacity of, the, of your entire building? Um, it'll be 113, uh, 120, about 140,000 square feet under one roof. Right. Right. How many people, though? How many people do you think? Oh, you could, four. I would guess uh, six thousand people probably could fit in the whole, in the whole building. Wow. We're so expecting exciting. as high as four thousand people on a, on a Friday, Saturday night each night in the club alone. Right. Ugh. Yeah, it's a it's a huge club, and then we just acquired uh, we just leased five acres adjacent to us from the Nevada Department of Transportation for eight for six hundred more parking spaces. No, so we, we now have 800 parking spaces on site besides to prepare for everything. You, again, from the beginning here, 
uh, and again, the part that where a, a lot of people kind of mess this up is you start off with somebody who is a stoner who starts to go and wants to go into the canvas business rather yeah. than having a true businessman going into the canvas business and knows what the hell he's. Um, uh, and, uh, and I got, if you got a second, I got to tell you, Chris, who is phenomenal what he does, but yeah. he doesn't have a lot of uh, business uh, uh, experience like we did. He told us when we started talking about the superstore, guys, it's a bad idea. This is not what stoners want people who use cannabis want this is they don't want this the, I, i'm telling you it's going to be a flop and of course we remind them of that all the time but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely dude your place is so stunning it's a stoner's dream it's the, <laughs> to me i i i'm yeah. going the absolute uh, other direction i i discovered so many great new products in your place, I love the way it's laid out and, and the way the structure is on the pricing. Now, that's another thing I was going to ask you. I, I've Obviously, I've interviewed owners and, and distributors now almost all around the world, and everybody's prices are going way, way, way down. Uh, Mark, Mark Emery up in Canada told me that uh, a premium flour that was selling for 3500 uh, Canadian a pound is selling for 350 a pound um a supply and demand is on a, a crazy level has those types of numbers or that not those types but has the uh the market responded the same way there in las vegas not as much in las vegas but just like that in california it went down uh oh well, i guess two months ago down to 600 a pound in california for wholesale and now it's back up to about a thousand it was crept back up but there was just such an influx of growers and product that came online Kind of like Arizona, which is in the news two weeks ago, their prices plummeted because now everybody finally came online and there was a glut of cannabis. Our prices haven't really changed a lot, but we're offering more deals even to the tourists now that we never did before. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we'll have uh, we'll have door openers for many different products. If they want to do those, fine. If they want to do some of more of our premium product, then of course it's where it is for the price. But we're offering a lot more deals that we've never done before for for our tourists. Right. And, and did I read somewhere that you guys are getting into the market in Florida as well? Yeah. We yeah. just announced a 23 acre uh, campus type effect for a 63,000 square foot building. The seal building's already on site. We're just trying to get the final permits to break ground and get that erected. We've announced three dispensaries already and we'll have uh, 12 more announced and have them open within two years. Of course, all medical, and then we're waiting for the recreational, and we've already selected our site, which is secret, but it's in Miami, and it's on the water, and it's going to be absolutely phenomenal. So, Sh Should we assume that it will be one of the largest in the state of Florida? <laughs> it will be the largest in the state of Florida. I'll make that prediction. <laughs> there you go. How do you know? What do you know about that? Um, What's what's next after Florida? I mean, you guys are moving at a pretty good pace. And and again, when I was there, you told me about three phases, and you're just about, I think, through phase three now here. With when once this this lounge opens, uh, what's next? What are you thinking about? I guess it. Well, as you know, it's changing so much. Uh, there's so many people. Well, I guess struggling for cash because there can be no more equity rates. You know, with the stock market and so on. And so four of the largest companies are 300 to 800 million in debt at 10 or 11% interest. It, that's just a killer. Mm. We, we are different because we, we're very adverse to debt. So we're sitting with 62 million in the bank and zero debt. Mm -hmm. uh, we're told by our bankers in Canada, there is no other company in the United States that is in that position. So we're very, very lucky. We're very conservative. So we're not planning we're going to have to wait and see what falls into our lap. We look at every deal there is. We get a lot of calls every week now, but it's got to be the right deal for us. And uh, I think more people are going to have to bleed. And it might, we might be someplace we never thought we'd be before when we see the shakeup of what's finally going to happen with the industry. Could be some bargains out there, huh? Absolutely. There will be. Yeah, we'll, we'll be ready. And there in Las Vegas, how has uh, overall the health of Las Vegas been? Is it it's a post COVID uh uh, has it been building back up again? And yeah, it's building back up. In fact, last month, the gaming commission or the gaming uh, 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 sector announced their largest win in the history of Las Vegas for, for last month. So it's back. They're gambling oh. again. People are spending. I, I'm a little surprised. I would think it would go down a little bit with 
with gas and food prices and, and everything going on. But so far last month, they were still going crazy. I guess they want to get out and spread their wings and forget about their troubles and enjoy life a little bit. And that's what seems like is happening yet. So, but I'm a terrible predictor of the future. You know, I wouldn't even have thought 2007 and eight, what would have happened? Uh, I was lucky enough to be in a good position, but uh, um, I, I don't know. I, I, and I don't know if even the talking heads know, you know, this is, we're in another, we're in another sector completely in where we were uh, at the last recession. Well, you know, that was, a, that's another thing I was going to ask you is uh, when I left and I was working on a story uh, talking about uh, Planet 13, if I remember correctly, you guys were averaging around 3,500 uh, customers a day. Is that, right. does that sound about right? But this was before right. delivery and this was before you were able to send anything. Did, when COVID really hit and when that, did those numbers go up? Did they go down? Did the delivery well, numbers go Well, when COVID hit, up? they went down because of the COVID was here, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's what we did, the delivery with where we bought, uh, you know, uh, 30 or 40 vehicles and 100 drivers, because that's the only thing we could do. Uh, mm -hmm. It's going back to about where it was, really. It's, it's kind of stabilized right now, and I don't know where we're going to go based on, again, we talked about the recession, what's going to happen. We know our basket size has dropped a little bit because people still want to get cannabis. Now they're being a little more conservative, maybe I should only buy $90 instead of $120, right, per right. person. Uh, and I understand that. So we'll just keep moving ahead. Thank God we're in a good position and can survive everything. And we'll wait and see what happens with everybody. I, I'm very optimistic yet about the industry. We just got to get some of the rules changed with the goofy government, uh, yeah. <laughs> government our elected officials. It's just silliness. What about magic mushrooms and uh, microdosing or? uh having some sort of a, a, a magic mushroom club or lounge yeah we i guess we haven't talked about it yet we're just trying to get the regular <laughs> lounge open first uh but as things go on we always keep our eyes open and, and if something looks like it's going to work and so on we haven't they haven't even addressed that as far as the state goes it's a long ways away but we'd look at anything that would, uh, was going on and is legalized that we could actually participate in absolutely and can you talk a little bit about uh, your medical marijuana specialty aspects of as, as far as uh, Plant 13 is concerned? That was another thing that really impressed me was uh, I had one of your bud tenders uh, walking me around and showing me all the different applications that were very specific towards uh, cancer. CB and CBDs and tinctures and one-to-one -one and all of those different things. Yeah. And that's really a, a large part of our, of our education that we have every day. A lot of that is because of medical. And we want every, all of our bartenders to be as educated as the one you talk to. And they all are. They're very, very good mm -hmm. talking about what, what the different effects are and why there was such one over the other. And, and a lot of people are concerned that there's still some THC with the CBD, but it, it's so minute. It's not going to give you a mind-altering experience, but it'll give you more effect for your medical condition and all, all these different items. Uh, that's, that's very high on our list and that's what we get accolades for all the time. Uh, uh, and I don't know if you remember, but, uh, two, maybe it's three years ago now, uh, since COVID was here, but, uh, they had the world, uh, bud tender awards, uh, held at Mandalay Bay yeah, yeah, yeah. and we actually took first place. Yeah. So yeah. we believe that much of, of training. I'm very uh, proud to say that you've had two of your bud tenders that have been on our worldwide bud reports. Uh, that we okay. often show at the end of these uh, uh, shows, and they do a spectacular job. You know, it's important, uh, training and education all around the world. The level of education has risen. The conversation, the terminology, uh, the people knowing about all of the terpenes and, and how they affect you. I wanted to tell you about one interesting thing that I saw in Huelva, Spain recently. It's the first time I've seen it anywhere on any type of, of cannabis. And what it was, was in the description of the cannabis itself, it talked about the curing time. And so it was like uh, amnesia haze, uh, 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 sativa, narrow leaf dominant, cured 24 weeks. Oh, so, for the curing of the plant before yeah, you got it. Of the buds, yes. I'll have to bring it up to Chris. He's got he's the he's our genius behind it, and see what uh, see what he thinks about the whole thing. And, and but you're right, the education is paramount. It's almost 
more important or as important as anything because we've been brainwashed since the 70s on how bad it is and stay away from it and it, it, it's going to fry your brain and it has no benefit at all. So we've got to continue to educate that to get over that, that right. brainwashing effect that we had. Well, not only that, but I mean, for a big corporation like yours, who is going state to state, um, you also have credibility. You know, we're seeing lots of smaller cannabis uh, organizations that rather than developing the proper trust and credibility of their customers, they'll come up with a new product or something, you know, this week, hoping that, you know, that's going to save their company. And right. you, know, you have put in the time and the effort and the vision and the money in order to build this dreamland, freaking wonderland, uh, Disneyland for, for, for any, any great stoner. And uh, I thank you, number one, again. Uh, oh, no, that's it. And, 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 but it's, it's, there's no book to go by. Nobody's done this well. We all got to learn by the seat of our pants. You know, a problem comes up. Well, how do we solve it? Here's another one. How do we solve that? And it's, it's been interesting. It's been fun doing that also. Uh, uh, and it's just become a behemoth that just, I just never realized it would be this large also. I mean, we're sitting at uh, nearly 500 people work at this one store now 24-7. And again, there's <laughs> nobody better to be doing this than you guys. And, oh, and again, that's why I'm so, that's the reason why, because this would, if, we would have had stoners all doing this. We'd be on the fifth set of owners. We would have lost all the good staff. All the, you know, things would be in turmoil. Uh, I, I'm delighted. It was the right. It's the right mix and the right, uh, right attitude and and the right amount of creativity with all of this. Do you have any other new products that you've seen or that you guys are creating right now that you can leak out a little bit or? Um, well, Chris yes. is always a working on new products. But I'm usually surprised as anybody because that's really his belly wig. And uh, when he yeah. brings them up to his tells us what we're doing. Uh, uh, but he's always got something up his sleeve. But uh, I don't have anything to report for you, unfortunately. But uh, there's always well, something new coming out. Well, maybe we can get him on the show sometime in the future because oh, I'd love to. Uh... He'd, he'd love to. And I think you guys would love to talk to him. He's an absolute genius. Oh, yeah. And just I... an first guy that would, loves to talk about cannabis. Well, Anytime well, you want to, I'll be happy to hook them up with you. And uh, yes, let's do, do that. That thing be great. Yeah, absolutely. And again, thank you so much. And I can't wait to get back to Las Vegas. And my very first stop, as soon as I get there, we'll be back at Planet 13. You, give me a call. Be happy to see you again. I will. Thank, thank you, you much. so much. Awesome. Back. Welcome back to the crib here in Vegas. Not too bad, huh? How about that interview with Larry? Dude. Planet 13 is going to be so amazing. I swear, I don't even want to stay here in this condo. I'll be happy to just have a sleeping bag and sleep on the floor. Dude, they've got everything there. I can't wait to come back to Las Vegas and party properly. All right, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. We will have another Wake and Bake with Captain Hooter on Saturday. We'll see you then. Bye. <laughs> it's Captain Hooter, far out, man.